Sir Oliver, your online math tutor. Hello mga kamathmates! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Kung bago ka pa lang sa channel ko, huwag mo kalimutan mag-subscribe at hit mo na yung post notification bell para updated ka every time na magpo-post ako ng bagong video. Panibagong video, panibagong lesson na naman ang pag-aaralan natin ngayon. Pero magkaroon muna tayo ng exploration activity. So consider these advertisements. If you want a straight and shiny hair, then use Cream Silk. So, hindi nga pala sponsor itong video na to, pero baha naman. Cream Silk. <laughs> and then, for our second statement, if you want a steam body, then drink Fit and Right. So, Fit and Right, baha naman. So, meron tayong dalawang advertisement statement. So, questioning. What are the words used in the two advertisements in the hope that consumers will believe their advertising claims? In mathematics, what do you call if-then statement? What do you call the if part? How about the then part? So these advertisements use if-then statement in the hope that consumers will believe their advertising claim. So in mathematics, an if-then statement is called a conditional statement. So the if part is the hypothesis and the then part is the conclusion. So, yung sa una nating statement, ang ating hypothesis doon is you want a straight and shiny hair. And then, yung ating conclusion ay use cream silk. Second, you want a slim body. And then, ang ating conclusion doon, drink, fit, and ride. So, therefore, we will be discussing about Conditional statements and its related statements, converse, inverse, and contrapositive statements. So what you will learn today, identify the hypothesis and conclusion of the if, then, and other related statements. Formulate the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of a conditional statement and determine the truth value of the given conditional statement and its related statement. So, what is a conditional statement? Conditionals are formed by joining two statements with the words if and then. So, ang kanyang symbol, if P, then Q. The if statement is the hypothesis and the then statement is the conclusion. Conditional statements are either true conditionals or false conditionals. A conditional is false, conditional when the hypothesis is true, and the conclusion is false. A conditional can be shown to be false by using a counter example. So, aalamin natin yung truth value ng ating conditional statement if it is true or false. So, here is our key concept. So, yung ating symbols ay P, tapos merong arrow na nakaturo sa Q. Read if P then Q or P implies Q. Tatandaan lang natin if, then the hypothesis denoted by letter P, and then the conclusion denoted by letter Q. So, the symbol is P. Then, yung arrow na nakaturo sa Q. So, let's have our first example. So, identify the hypothesis and conclusion of the following statement. If a polygon has six sides, then it is a hexagon again. If a polygon has six sides, then it is a hexagon. So, that will be our conditional statement. So, let us identify the hypothesis and the conclusion. So, our answer is, the hypothesis, a polygon has six sides. Conclusion, it is a hexagon. Okay, second conditional statement. Tamika will advance to the next level of play if she completes the maze in her computer game. Again, Tamika will advance to the next level of play if she completes the maze in her computer game. So, our answer, hypothesis, Tamika completes the maze in her computer game. 
So, not all the time, lagi nasa unahan yung ating hypothesis. So, pwede siyang nasa gitna. Conclusion, she will advance to the next level of play. Basta, tandaan lang, la, tandaan lang it follows the word if for our hypothesis and it follows the word then for our conclusion. So, ngayon, marunong na tayong mag-identify ng hypothesis at ng conclusion. So, identify the hypothesis and conclusion of the following statement and then write the statement in the if-then form. So, meron tayo ditong given sentence. A five-sided polygon is a pentagon. So, therefore, the if and then statement, if a polygon has five sides, then it is a pentagon. So, our hypothesis is a polygon has five sides. And then, ang ating conclusion, it is a Pentagon. So, let's have a real-world example for the truth values of conditionals. So, determine the truth value of the following statement for each set of conditions. If you can rest for 10 days, his ankle will heal. So, ang ating first statement, you can rest for 10 days and he still has a hurt ankle. So, doon tayo magbe-base sa given a conditional statement na if you can rest for 10 days, his ankle will heal. So, alamin natin yung truth values. So, the hypothesis is true kasi pare silang nag for 10 days. But, the conclusion is false because in our given statement, he still has a hurt ankle. Then, our answer, since the result is not what was expected, the conditional statement is false. Okay? So, let's have the second statement. So, alamin ulit natin ang truth value. You can rest for three days and he still has a hurt ankle. So, is it true or false? So, the hypothesis is false, of course. So, three days lang siya nag-rest. It should be ten days. And the conclusion is false because negating siya doon sa given natin na his ankle will heal tapos he still has a hurt ankle. The statement does not say what happens if you can only rest for three days. His ankle could possibly still heal, of course. So, in this case, we cannot say that the statement is false. Thus, the statement is considered true statement. Okay, na-analyze na. Okay, very good. So, let's have the next statement. You can rest for 10 days and he does not have a hurt ankle anymore. So, the hypothesis is true since you can rest it for 10 days and the conclusion is true because he does not have a hurt ankle. Since what was, ex what was stated is true, the conditional statement is true. It is Similar with a given conditional statement. Iniba lang yung pagkakaano ng sentence. Then, you can rest for 7 days and he does not have a hurt ankle anymore. For our last statement, the hypothesis is false and the conclusion is true. The statement does not say what happens if you can only rest for 7 days. In this case, we cannot say that the statement is false Thus, the statement is true. Try to analyze the problem. Again, the statement does not say what, hap what happened. Okay, now let's talk about the re related statement with the conditionals. So, conditional, it is in the form of if P, then Q. So, the other related statement is the converse. Again, converse. If Q, then P. Kung mapapansin, pinagbaliktad lang yung 
yung conclusion ay magiging hypothesis ni Converse. So, it is in the form of if Q, then P. For the inverse, if not P, then not Q. So, lalagyan lang natin ng not or yung negation nung conditional statement. So, therefore, if not P, then not Q. Then, contrapositive is the negation of the converse. If not Q, then not P. So, we have the rules of logic to follow. The truth value of a converse may or may not be the same as that of its conditional. So, it not necessarily mean na kapag true yung ating conditional, yung ating converse ay true na din. So, there comes a time na kapag ginawa natin ang converse statement yung conditional, magiging false yung ating statement. The truth value of a conditional and its contrapositive are always the same. Likewise, for a converse and an inverse. So, para mas madaling maunawaan, meron tayo ditong key concept in table form. So, yung sa conditional natin, P, yung arrow, then Q. So, P implies Q. Example, if two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. And that is a true statement. Yung ating hypothesis, two angles have the same measure, ang ating conclusion ay they are congruent. Kapag naman gagawin natin siyang converse, Q, if Q, then P. Yung conclusion ng ating conditional ay magiging hypothesis na ngayon ni converse. Kaya magiging, if two angles are congruent, then they have the same measure. And that is also a true statement. Our converse statement is true. Kapag naman inverse, ganito yung ating symbol ng negation, yung parang nasa taas ng enya, that is tilde. So, not P, then not Q. So, if angles do not have the same measure, then they are not congruent. And that is also a true statement. So, ninegate lang natin yung if P, then Q. So, that is negating both the hypothesis and conclusion. Kapag naman, contrapositive is negating both the hypothesis and the conclusion of the converse. So, therefore, if not Q, then not P. So, if two angles are not congruent, then they do not have the same measure. So, our contrapositive statement is also true. So, pag-aralan lang pong mabote yung ating uh, key concepts. So, nanda na po yung ating examples. So, yung kanyang formed, it is formed by yung kanyang symbols at yung ating given na example. So, dito sa paggawa ng mga related statement, tandaan lang po natin yung mga symbols na gagamitin. Yan. If P, then Q. If Q, then P. If not P, then not Q. And if not Q, then not P. Okay, so let's have an example for related conditionals. Write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of the statement All squares are rectangles to determine whether each statement is true or false. If a statement is false, give a counter example. So, let's start with writing the conditional in the if and then form. So, if a shape is a square, then it is a rectangle. The conditional statement is true. So, ito yung sa family ng quadrilaterals that a square is a rectangle. So, therefore, we can say that our conditional statement is True. Next, write the converse by switching the hypothesis and conclusion of the conditional. If a shape is a rectangle, then it is a square. So the converse is false. A rectangle with length 2 and width of 4 is not a square. So meaning, square is a rectangle but rectangle is not a square. And then for the inverse, if a shape is not square, then it is not a rectangle. Doon siya nanggaling sa my conditional, ninegate lang natin siya. The inverse is false. A four-sided polygon with side length 2, 2, 4, and 4 is not a square. 
Because when we say square, all sides must be equal. In a rectangle, two congruent sides, right? And then, the contrapositive is formed by negating the hypothesis and conclusion of the converse. If a shape is not rectangle, then it is not square. So therefore, the contrapositive statement is true. So that's how we write the given statement in different related statement. Okay, next. A triangle with no sides congruent is scalene. So that is uh, types of a triangle according to sides. First, write the conditional in the in if, uh, if and then form. If a triangle has no sides congruent, then it is Scalene. So the conditional statement is true. It is according to the definition of a scalene triangle. Then write the converse by switching the hypothesis and conclusion of the conditional. If a triangle is scalene, then it has no sides congruent. So the converse statement is also true. So the inverse statement if a triangle has congruent sides, then it is not scalene. So, bakit hindi siya not? Bakit wala siyang word na not? Because our conditional is no congruent sides. So, ang kabalik tara nun, has congruent sides. Then, sa ating uh, conclusion, it is scalene. So, dito naman, it is not scalene. So, therefore, the conditional statement is also true. Then, the contrapositive is formed by negating the hypothesis and conclusion of the converse. So, if a triangle is not scalene, then it has congruent sides. So, the contrapositive statement is also true. So, remember lang yung ating form na dapat sundan and the rules of logic para manalaman nyo ang truth values ng ating mga statement. So, that concludes our discussion today. So, don't forget to like and share it with your friends and classmates. See you on my next video tutorial. Thank you for watching. God bless us all.